Well, I'm Dr. David Johnson, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Gastroenterology at Eastern Virginia Medical School in Norfolk, Virginia. Well, COVID's been with us for now almost two years, 300 million people in the world, uh, three and a half million deaths in the world, somewhere in the 60 million U.S. citizens and 850,000 deaths. So catastrophic implications and consequences and certainly has an effect on the GI tract. We know that. I wanted to just pause for a second and give you an update on some of the, the more uh, newsworthy items that I think are practical and uh, certainly applicable to your clinical practice. First, we know that the GI tract is certainly infected. We see the persistence of GI symptoms anywhere out to six months or longer. Uh, we certainly know from the, the changes that are evident in the gut biome that these are also persistent after the virus is cleared, a recent study from China showed that there are uh, diminished uh, diversity, that there's a, a loss or a lack of a lot of the short chain fatty acids and L-isoleucine -iso uh, that promote gut integrity. These are after the virus is cleared, so persistent uh, that go on for months after the uh, clearance of the virus. We certainly know that the implications for the GI tract after an infectious enteritis are consequent for things like irritable bowel syndrome, about 10% of patients uh, post-infectious uh, enteritis uh, develop irritable bowel. And the estimates are because COVID mean dur median duration is 12 days, that this may increase the likelihood of, of these post-infectious irritable bowel type symptoms by 10 times. We certainly know that there are also now data that suggests that if the patients have a pre-existing mental health disparity, uh, in particular anxiety or depression, uh, they're twice as likely to develop more uh, GI symptoms during the course of the virus, and they're four times more likely if they have those symptoms to develop after, the, uh, after they've, they've had the virus to have GI symptoms. So again, take a good mental health history, not only uh, during, uh, but preceding the onset of COVID because it may be meaningful and may be something you can also mitigate towards uh, treatment as well. We do know that there are a variety of things that also uh, happen with this as it relates to malnutrition. A very recent study from New York, 17,000 hospitalized patients, retrospective analysis, showed that malnutrition may be a really significant consequence and durable over time for out to six months. Median weight loss was over 17 pounds. Uh, and this persisted in, at least in uh, over 50% of uh, patients at three months and in approximately a little more than a third of patients at six months. So again, focus on malnutrition and use that as some of the benchmarks for assessing these patients as it relates to uh, sequential follow-up. The other is as it relates to vaccinations in, in our IBD patients, particularly on biologic therapies. This is a, a very provocative study that came from the uh, University, uh, Washington University in St. Louis, where basically they looked at the protection now against the variants, in particular here Delta, and they looked at patients after the second dose of the vaccine. And we do know that the vaccine is protective in the, in the IBD patients taking uh, anti-TNF uh, agents, but this specifically was looking at Delta variant. So in, in particular, after the second dose of the vaccine, uh, only 8% of the healthy patients fell below the neutralizing antibodies as it relates to protection, but 36% fell below if they're immunocompromised and 67% fell below if they were on anti-TNF. Now, it more worrisome with going out beyond the second dose at six months, only 17, still 17% 17 of the healthy patients uh, drop below the estimated protection level, and this was 58% drop below for the immunocompromised level and 100% drop below for the TNF inhibitors. So again, vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. These people have to get their uh, booster shots and you really need to push them on this. On the uh, consequence of patients that can't take the booster shot or can't take the TNF, uh, uh, can't take the COVID vaccines, about 3% of patients have some type of uh, intolerance or allergy. Good news here too is the recent approval of the FDA of a long-acting monoclonal antibody cocktail. This is Tixagivimab uh, and also uh, Silgavimab. This is a uh, one-shot booster that lasts for up to six months. Again, may be a nice viable option for your patients going forward. So vaccinate, uh, they gotta get the boosters, prioritize, and hopefully some of these new COVID updates and it relates to GI will have meaningful impact for your discussions with your patients. I'm Dr. David Johnson. Thanks again for listening.